Today is Thursday, March 25th, 2021. Thank you for attending today's seminar entitled The Future of Retail Reimagined. Uh, we are excited, a lot of data to dive into today. I am your host, Sam Niedemeyer, coming from the bright and sunny studios of New York City. With me on the other side is the CEO and co-founder of Feedback Wiz, Henson Wu. Henson, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing awesome, thanks, uh, Sam. And uh, we're right now, I'm out in San Jose, California. So it's a beautiful day out also. And, you know, weather's looking good and things are getting back to normal. So uh, really excited today to host this webinar and, you know, kind of go over all the uh, metrics and, you know, trends and details that we've, uh, you know, compiled together and want to share it with, uh, share it with everyone and get your feedback at the end of the end of the webinar. Absolutely, absolutely. So thank you so much. Uh, um, if you have your screen, uh, we can start sharing there. I apologize here that the, uh, I'm putting up Zoom right here, but I, I do, I will get over there quickly. And then after uh, you, you're able to share your screen on the presentation, I'll take it from there and, and we can uh, move forward. But uh, today, everyone, I want to thank you for coming. Uh, we are with Feedback Wiz. Feedback Wiz uh, is helping Amazon sellers drive sales, increase profits, and grow their brand. As we get started and we present uh, some of the data with you today, uh, we're going to go ahead and give you some, some key takeaways that we want you all to think of uh, for today's session. Uh, I want you to think about, hey, this is going to be really, really data-oriented. Lots of data, data, data. Uh, kind of think about you know, coexisting with Amazon as a channel for your digital strategy rather than a, com a competitor, as some people might think. Uh, one really big takeaway, uh, software, agencies, fulfillment, advertising, and financing, all key as you launch into marketplaces or expand into different marketplaces in 2021. Uh, but most importantly, I would like to get you to think about what is it that you want to get out of this today? So think about what is it that's important to your business? How can you assess this data uh, and go from there? Uh, so with our today's agenda, we have, uh, we're gonna go over the state of Amazon uh, and also the uh, e-com economy. Uh, just some things to think about that necessarily might not be on your train of thought as you think about sourcing or getting uh, different vendors, think about price changes and increasing prices. Uh, we'll be diving into uh, the e-com data. Uh, we also have some predictions for 2021, the feedback was predictions coming in hot and you all are the first ones that are gonna be able to see that. Uh, we have some updates on Amazon news, fees, things like that. Uh, obviously we want to coexist. We want you to think about how you can coexist with Amazon with the right strategy of tech. Uh, and we do have a gift for you at the very end. Now, we have a lot, a lot of information to present today. So uh, one thing I want you to think about uh, is basically, uh, if you have any questions, we'll get to those at the end. Uh, we do understand that uh, people are gonna have a lot of questions, but we got a lot of information that we're gonna convey to you. Uh, so think, so so when you have your questions, just kind of think, think about them for a second, write them down. We'll come back and address them at the end. We have about 30 minutes slated for today. It's a strong possibility we could go a little bit over. That's okay, as long as you're willing to stay. We're gonna send a recording of the video along with some resources afterwards. We'll also provide you with a promo code that you can use uh, if you want to upgrade any packages you have, any subscription plans, or if you want to try out Feedback Wiz and then come aboard us and use all the Amazon, the amazing Amazon seller tools to grow your digital business, that's fine too. So we'll have all of that for you. Uh, and we are super, super excited uh, to, uh, to, to, to get started. So uh, one thing, and uh, Henson, do you have those uh, that, that slide there? I do have to apologize. I'm having some, some issues with- Okay, uh, you, can't you can't screen share, huh? Okay, let me- yeah, sorry about that. Um, sure, I don't, of course, uh, usually used to get going through uh, Google, Google calls, and now we're going through Zoom. So uh, that's always fun. So uh, we're going to go, we're going to get started. Uh, as you can see, this is uh, Feedback Ways, the Future of Retail. Uh, we're going to move right on through. Uh, we're up on slide five, nine, uh, sl slide five. Uh, and uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and get started. So uh, fun e-com fact. That you think about. Uh, so US e-com sales during the 2010s grew about 252.28% over the span of 10 years. From last year to this year, it was a 32.26% increase, right? So during COVID, that's 
obviously very expected that we're going to see high amounts of growth in sales. In fact, it was the fastest U.S. growth, excuse me, fastest U.S. growth rate, uh, more than doubling 2011's growth rate of 17.7. But from there, Hansen's going to lead us into kind of some the state of the digital economy, digital, but it's all the same economy there. So Henson, what kind of things are you seeing uh, that people need to think about? Yeah, so we compiled some data here and um, this data is from the US Bureau of Labor Statistics and it's mainly regarding like, you know, import prices, um, inflation prices. So uh, the first chart we have here is we're looking at US import prices and this is basically the average change in price of goods and services that are imported to the US. So, you know, for example, um, you know, most sellers source their products from, you know, Asia or um, other countries like Europe. And this is kind of an average of uh, the trends. Uh, and we see that in 2020, there was a huge drop off to, due to COVID. And then now these um, import prices are, you know, rebounding and almost back to the same levels as we saw in 2018. So, um, you know, there's quite a bit of a sharp uh, change in the trend and we see it's, it's very positive. So uh, this is actually, uh, not very good for sellers because, you know, prices are being, you know, when you're buying your goods, it's actually becoming more expensive. So uh, this is one uh, statistic we need to, um, you know, be a little bit aware of uh, looking forward for the rest of this year. Um, the next slide we have is the producer price index. And this basically measures the costs of, uh, you know, the how much the suppliers uh, for them to make the products. So as you can see, uh, the cost to, uh, build products in the United States is ex extremely expensive now, and there's uh, was a major rebound uh, since COVID-19, and you know we're at probably the highest point we've ever been in the last five years. Uh, however, if you look at China, uh, you can see that drop off is uh, is it was a more severe, and the prices haven't gone up as much. And as Amazon sellers, most of us source our products from China, so um, you know we probably haven't seen that type of uh, jump yet in terms of the costs uh, to, to buy these products. However, um, we could see that the trend overall is, is creeping up. So that's something to you know, be aware of as well. And then we have the US uh, Consumer Price Index. And this basically measures the cost of change from the viewpoint of the consumer. And as an Amazon shopper, um, you know, my wallet is, is hurting, right? Because I can see from last year to this year, um, there's been quite a bit increase in prices, right? So everything uh, that I'm paying for is uh, suddenly going higher. And this basically ties into our next slide, which is the inflation rate in the US. And as we can see that, um, again, there was a drop off in early 2020, and now inflation is starting to rise. And we can see that um, in the table on the right, um, we have you know, a lot of different uh, metrics on how uh, we, the, uh, the US Bureau of Labor Statistics measures inflation. But the most important one is looking at uh, all, all items less food and energy. Uh, you can see there's a 1.3% increase uh, uh, 12 month change. So that's not very significant. However, um, you know, with all the stimulus money uh, being poured out there and, you know, people are now going back and, ready to shop, we can see that you know, the inflation rate is starting to go up. Um, so this could be uh, positive for Amazon sellers because you know we could see there's more demand for goods, more demand for supplies, people are going on spending more. Uh, there's more money out there. Um, so overall we see the trend has uh, is, is positive in pretty much um, you know all the all the different indexes that we were tracking here. So uh, let's take a look into the data. And, um, you know, Sam, you can lead us here. Yeah, I'm ex I mean, we got some interesting things that we're going to bring up with, uh, with inflation, specifically around our predictions for 2021 and how they factor into Amazon sellers. Really excited for that. For now, let's kind of look big picture onto the data, right? So uh, as we see, you know, growth over 32% over the last year, Amazon's still, still the top e-com channel. They kind of for nearly a third of all e-com growth. That being said, they were their their growth share from 2019 went down 43.8 percent. Uh, Walmart, Apple, Dell, Best Buy, Home Depot, Target. You see all these lists over here uh, that uh, of, of companies that, that are moving up. Fun fact: Etsy also had a very large share uh, share growth. Actually, beat every other e-com channel, and that's because they became 
really creative with their masks. So a uh, really fun fact there. Uh, but the Amazon International Marketplace's sales grew uh, 40% uh, for over year to year. So as you can see, uh, 104.44, uh, excuse me, 104.41 billion uh, total sales growth over all their Amazon International Marketplaces. Uh, by comparison, as you look on to uh, the next uh, e big uh, growth channels right there by, by, by uh, uh, growth volume, uh, eBay grew about 20.9%. Walmart about 47.1%. Now that includes Walmart International, uh, Walmart US, and, and Sam's Club as well. Shopify coming up with huge gains, 86%. Uh, definitely some e-com channels uh, that you want to look out for. But uh, with all this Amazon seller growth uh, that you see uh, as we look onto the uh, new Amazon third-party sellers on this slide, is it necessarily matching the accelerated sales growth? Uh, so we do have about six, there's about six million uh, third, part, third party sellers coming, excuse me, six million Amazon sellers. Uh, and a lot of those coming from China, uh, a lot of those coming from India. Uh, you can see the percent gains specifically in October of 2020 between China, Saudi Arabia. Uh, so there's obviously a little bit of a demand, excuse me, a little bit of a supply that might necessar not necessarily meet up uh, with demand if you look at these numbers. Now, uh, fun fact on uh, e-com versus retail, Online sales this year accounted for 101% of all gains in retail in 2020. Think about that. Brick and mortar as we know it, stores, catalogs, call centers, all declined. All their sales declined. Not really a big shocker when it comes to, you know, with the pandemic that hit, uh, uh, that hit us hard uh, in 2020. Um, that being said, it's the first time ever in which e-com sales accounted for all retail sales gains. Uh, and as we dive a little bit deeper, specifically pre-COVID into what Amazon uh, was selling what per, excuse me what consumers were purchasing on Amazon. Uh, it's probably no no shocker here that that electronics claimed a, a portion, large portion of what consumers are purchasing. Uh, apparel coming in a close second, uh, and then we see uh, as we go into in 2020 uh, Amazon sales, uh, electronics uh, still king, but they're losing traction a little bit. What we can dissect from here is this that more diversity of consumer shopping purchases are happening on Amazon. Again, not really any type of new information. If we really think about it, those consumers aren't going to brick and mortar. They're staying right on Amazon and searching for what they want there. Uh, interestingly enough, side note that Amazon's uh, apparel clothing is actually selling number one as well too. But if you think about the growth on Walmart, you think about the growth on Shopify, Etsy, uh, it's not really a coincidence that their apparel is, uh, is, is, is being purchased at such a rapid pace comparatively. Uh, and so when we look at our numbers, Henson, how does that, how do those kind of compare with what we're seeing over the last year uh, compared to, you know, on Amazon and, and our average user, uh, we can kind of get, get some juicy data from that as well, right? Yeah, so, you know, we have feedback clues here. Um, you know, we spent some time here um, you know, kudos to our development team. We were able to compile some of the data across the board uh, just to see, you know, what the trends are looking uh, like overall. So we did a comparison from uh, January of 2020, uh, basically the Q1, uh, and then compared to this year to see, you know, how things are doing. And of course, these numbers, um, you know, they're big numbers. And I think some of the reason is because of some of the drop off we had uh, due to COVID. Um, however, um, you know, we can see year over year percentage increase by seller, um, you know, across our user base, we can see that the number of uh, SKUs added uh, increased by 22%, right? The number of orders uh, purchased increased by 37%, which is, uh, which is amazing. Uh, it seems like, you know, uh, e-commerce sellers and Amazon sellers have been just uh, growing a lot, right? And, and that correlates extremely well with, you know, what we've seen in terms of uh, the state of the digital e-commerce uh, sellers uh, selling on Amazon and other platforms. And, you know, sales revenue is, is about 40% as well. So these numbers are uh, extremely positive and we, we can see that, you know, sellers are just growing, um, you know, great over year, year over year. Um, we also took a little deeper dive and took a look at the price changes in, um, since a lot of sellers have always been wondering, you know, what's our, our prices actually increasing or decreasing. Uh, so this is some really good data we compiled and we kind of just uh, took a look at, you know, um, based on 
um, how many, based on the ASINs that you're selling, um, how much has the price increased, right, for the sellers? Like how much did they, sorry, how much did the sellers increase their price, right? Um, overall, we see that, you know, about 25% um, of the ASINs that we monitor have no change in price. So in the price from last year to this year was exactly the same. Um, however, we see a pretty even distribution between uh, people raising their price and people lowering the price. So uh, it seems like overall there's a slight increase in price, about 38.5% uh, versus 36.4% uh, in decreasing price. Um, but you know, you guys can look a little deeper into this chart, and as you can see, uh, we try to break it down into um, how much they increase the price from anywhere from 5% up to 75% uh, higher and lower. Um, so it, it kind of, based on this data, what we've seen is that most, most of the prices and most of the sellers haven't really, uh, changed their price very much. So the fluctuation in terms of sales price, uh, has relatively, st uh, been stable in the last year. Um, and then we are, uh, we have some of these trends and predictions for 2021 we're looking at, and, uh, based on some of the graphs we uh, explained earlier, um, inflation, um, you know, based on the. Bureau of statistics, we see that there's a 1.7% increase uh, in annual inflation in February 2021, which is the highest rate since February 2020. And, you know, the Fed expects that inflation could temporarily exceed 2%. And this will basically mean that, um, you know, prices are going to be higher. Um, you know, this could hurt overall sales. Um, most likely, you know, if people can't afford to pay uh, too much money for products. Uh, they might be willing to spend less. So that's one thing to keep track of. Um, margin decreases is also one thing, um, you know, we're looking into and we see that, you know, U.S. and China producer prices are, are increasing and it's just a matter of time before um, the producers start increasing their uh, prices on us, right? So cost of goods are increasing, uh, which basically means that uh, we're going to be losing and decreasing on profit margin. So uh, keep, it, keep a note of that. Um, inventory stockpiling. Uh, basically, COVID uh, really messed up some of the, um, you know, supply chain uh, distribution. So we are still, uh, you know, seeing a lot of, um, you know, people not being able to get their goods or lead times uh, increasing by up to 50%. Uh, so a lot of sell sellers now are uh, stockpiling and ordering more inventory than ever. Uh, and this is basically due to longer lead times and due to that the demand is uh, growing. Um, very fast and online and not just on Amazon, but we saw on Walmart and Shopify. So people are definitely consuming more online. So therefore, um, you know, we recommend that, you know, people that are reordering their inventory, um, you know, you probably want to order um, quite a bit more just, you don't so you don't run out of stock. Uh, we also noticed that there's a lot more competition on Amazon in the last year. So uh, top sellers with, uh, you know, more than selling more than 1,000 products in inventory um, have actually been decreasing. So the number of products they're selling is, is decreasing. And that's mainly because um, a lot of the top sellers on Amazon are selling um, reselling products and not so much private label. So we've seen a big shift in private label. So private label products are increasing and resell uh, people reselling um, 3P products are decreasing. So this basically means there's more competition for similar uh, made products. And because there's more competition for the same products, um, you know, right now, Amazon, uh, the only way to get more exposure for the, for your product is to increase in ad spending. So we've seen um, a large increase in um, just PPC spending all across the board for our sellers. Yeah, it's funny with the inventory stockpiling too. How about the, everything that's going on in the port of Los Angeles and uh, the Suez Canal? That really doesn't help either, does it? <laughs> with everything going on. So, um, all right, we're going to go into some more Amazon news and updates. I, I feel like the, the updates in the news and especially with the data and e-com is just changing all the, all the time. So as you all know, Jeff Bezos is stepping down. He'll be uh, uh, stepping down uh, in Q3. But some other things, some really real, real more important things came out with the uh, Q4 Amazon uh, quarterly report. 54% uh, of all units sold on Amazon were sold by 3Ps, 54% in 2020. Uh, just a really, really great number for uh, 3Ps to use, um, to use Amazon a, a, as a channel. Uh, the third party seller sales grew by uh, a little a little under 60% year over year on three days specifically, Prime Day, 
Black Friday and Cyber Monday. I'm sure all of you have those dates locked into your calendars. Uh, and the cost of shipping goods rose 67%, climbing to 21.5 billion. Fun fact, that's more than the Dallas Cowboys, the New York Yankees, the New York Knicks, and the world champion Los Angeles Lakers combined. That is a uh, kind of an incredible Forbes valuation number right there. Um, but the big thing was that Amazon fee changes uh, did come out. Uh, we, they were finally released last week. We're gonna see changes of about two to 3% uh, and fulfillment fees, referral and program fees, returns and processing fees, and the new selection program, uh, removals, disposals, and small and light fees. Now, uh, we are going to go on to, uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna go on to the next slide, but I want you all to know that we're, we're gonna be sending out this material to you afterwards with all the fees labeled out so that you can uh, see those uh, at your earliest convenience. So if you have any questions on that, uh, we will be sending that out, but please put them in the chat. Uh, so it's kind of like with the fees coming out, the data that we have in terms of Amazon's 3P partner, uh, 3P selling more, it kind of makes you think maybe it was a, well, are the 3Ps going to grow? Will more brands sell direct to consumer? How will this affect 3Ps selling on Amazon? Uh, and so I want you to think about this, this, this kind of comment from Marketplace Pulse's year in review 2020. It says, Going into 2021, fundamentals like software, agencies, fulfillment, advertising, and financing are key. They power the flywheels of e-commerce and will continue to attract the capital. Enabled by them, Amazon, Amazon, as well as the other marketplaces, will get bigger. So when you think about that, one of the, one of the areas that we can kind of uh, see right there, we, we love Marketplace Pulse all the time, is when we think about them. Um, and you go on to the, to the next slide, you see that you don't really want to compete, you want to coexist. That's kind of the, the message that we want to hammer in. Data, 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 right? Like, it's all about having that data and optimizing it, taking control of your financial data. You wanna make sure that you stay up to date in real time. So all of those are the technology aspects, right? Make sure you have the tools that can go and have full visibility. Make sure you have alerts so that you, you know, if you have any type of price changes, those are coming right at you, coming in hot so that you can, you can coexist with, with Amazon uh, and, and, and work on there as a channel. Uh, and then you use that data and you build a digital strategy that's best for your business, not, not a digital strategy for any other business, a digital strategy that works for you. Uh, and luckily, Henson, uh, we got a tool that can probably help with that, right? Yeah. So, you know, a lot of you, a lot of us um, on this webinar today are, you know, Feedback with users. And, you know, we've done a webinar uh, about a month ago uh, introducing our new profit and accounting tool. So, you know, this profit and accounting tool that we created feedback with um, is a one of a kind, you know, we, we basically pull together all the different data points uh, from, you know, your Amazon seller uh, store. And, you know, we help you, um, you know, aggregate the data, give you guys insights, uh, display trends, uh, manage uh, basically everything with uh, your Amazon finances. And uh, since we released this product, um, you know, we're continuously um, adding new features and, you know, we've made a lot of nice updates in the last uh, couple of weeks. So if you haven't tried it out or if you used it and uh, definitely log back in, uh, take a look, you know, um, um, it's great. So, you know, a lot of the, the most important things that we really tried to um, make this the best as possible is, you know, being able to, you uh, you know, aggregate all the different data points, right? Not just from one marketplace, but from all marketplaces and not just for one product or all products, but, you know, your own customized products. So you can, you know, aggregate your own, um, you know, create your own labels, create your own groups, uh, look at the data and compare the data between groups and identify uh, some of the trends that we talked about, right? Whether it's Amazon fees, uh, whether it's um, your business expenses, cost of goods, um, you know, all this data is inside the software and, you know, we've built it in a way where it's um, very easily consumable and intuitive to use. So um, definitely check it out. And, um, you know, we're not going to go into too much detail into um, how it works, but, you know, in the, if you can go to our YouTube channel, you can, you know, view our webinar from last, uh, last month. And, you know, that's where we uh, go into detail and we have a few uh, videos on our YouTube channel as well that you can watch. But as a quick summary, um, you know, sales, taxes, promos, all the data points are there. You can input business, cog expenses, um, you know, just very detailed uh, analytics for all your products. 
And um, the one of the really good things that we focus on is uh, data visualiz data visualization. So a lot of graphs and trends, um, which is not very easy to you know make yourself unless you're proficient in using Excel. But uh, we made it very simple to uh, compare graphs, compare different data points, uh, Amazon fees, um, pretty much every single Amazon fee that's uh, you know for your orders and sales we've. Uh, we've uh, imported in here. So you can measure your profitability in real time. So it's really easy to know exactly your you know, profit margins. And like I mentioned before, uh, being able to custom group ASINs and SKUs is extremely powerful. So you can uh, break down uh, you know, products by variations. You could you know, uh, customize it by groups, by uh, categories, right? And compare between uh, international marketplaces. So if you're selling on let's say European marketplaces and US marketplaces, uh, it's very easy to see the data um, across you know, single and multiple marketplaces. And then we also have the uh, real-time currency conversion. So you know, if you're a European seller and you're uh, accustomed to seeing your products uh, sales in euros, you can change everything to euros and vice versa, US seller, um, change everything to dollars and et cetera. So, um, so yeah, quick summary of our product, profits and loss tool. and um, for attending this webinar, we're giving you guys a, a special deal here. And if you guys have any questions or you never used it before, you can check out our feedbackways.com uh, backlash features profits page for more details. And um, anyone that hasn't tried it yet, there's always a free 30 day trial um, to, to try it out. And if you used it and you haven't upgraded and you know, you're planning to you know, want to subscribe, we're giving you a uh, awesome offer right now. So 20% off any monthly plan using promo code profits 20 M. And if uh, for a yearly plan, we're giving you 33% off. So third profits 33 Y. Um, yep. If you guys have any questions about any of the stuff we talked about today or about our profits tool, um, you know, we're ready for Q and a. Yeah, and I think uh, the thank you for that, Henson. Uh, we'll be sending a follow-up uh, email with some resources. So uh, uh, if you do uh, want to have any, have any more questions, want to dive into some of the resources that we use uh, through, through our blog, through our podcast, through our video channel, we'll be sending those up uh, right there. So Henson, this this question comes in um, from Jennifer. She's asking about the uh, the inflation rates and what you think could be the projections of. What does this data say comparatively to what your predictions are? How does the inflation rate uh, factor in? What is the, the maximum rate that you could see affect? How could you see that affecting uh, price changes for the rest of the year? Yeah, so the inflation rate that the government reports um, is, is, is an aggregate of a lot of different um, you know, data points, right? It's not just based on com consumer groups, it could be energy, it could be food prices, agriculture. And um, like I mentioned earlier, uh, excluding food and energy, we're seeing about like 1.3%. That's what the government reports. And uh, nobody really knows how they get the data. It's all through surveys. Uh, it's kind of a black box. Um, and based on Amazon uh, prices, it's, it's very different, right? We're like kind of in a different world right now because we're in e-commerce. It's, it's expanding extremely fast. It's growing extremely fast. Um, however, based on the data that I presented earlier from our um, internal feedback with data, we've seen that, you know, prices haven't really changed that much, you know, from last year to this year. Overall, it's, you know, relatively stable. And um, if anything, you see some of the, there's a lot of sellers actually lowering their prices as well. So that could be uh, several factors, right? It could be, um, you know, more competition, right? It could be people trying to clear out the inventory, getting new products, right? Um, so, I don't think based based on just the uh, you know data we've seen so far, you know, prices seem like they're gonna be pretty stable, but you know, the trend is heading higher, it is going up, right? And people now have more disposable income to spend. You know, there's a lot of stimulus money out there. There's a lot of government incentives to create more jobs, create um, you know, inflation is just, you know, it's always gonna be trending higher, right? Unless, you know, the the one thing we can really look at is the interest rates, right? The interest rates are extremely low. Uh, it's very easy to borrow money right now. So there's a lot of money flowing around. So until interest rates start going higher, um, you know, I would say the trend would be that, you know, prices would just steadily increase over time. 
All right. Um, so another question, this one comes from Michael. This one's factor also asking about our trends and predictions. So uh, you, Henson, your top five predictions there, top, top four predictions, you should say, are, are looking pretty good. Uh, asking more into the uh, top sellers with 1,000 or more products uh, decreasing in resale. How, uh, sorry, how, uh, how is the shift to private level label affecting sellers that are less? Sorry, sellers that are selling less. Well, I think it's it's positive for sellers that are selling less because that means that you know the smaller sellers are starting to um, you know get a bit more of the market share of the overall products sold on Amazon, right? Um, it's it's being it's harder for bigger sellers to maintain um, you know a profitable and you know operational level of managing all these products, a large number of inventory. Right. There's there's more sellers competing. Right. They're coming up with better products. Right. And then they're starting to gain more of the market share over uh, just products in general. So I think as a smaller seller, if you have um, a really good product or, you know, a similar product to, you know, some of the top products out there. And if you have the ability to make it better um, and you can be competitive in price, um, you know, there's definitely a lot of opportunity out there. And I think that's why we see that the bigger sellers actually selling. Uh, their inventory is actually starting to decrease, right? So, all right, excellent. I do have uh, two more questions here. I, I want to get to before we uh, move on. Uh, Musa, I believe uh, his name is. I'm sorry if I'm mispronouncing this. Asks uh, lead times have been terrible over the last few months. Is this just Chinese New Year's, or is this going to be expected throughout the year? Um, that's a good question. Um, you know, we thought it was. During Chinese New Year's, there's always going to be um, some fluctuations, but um, based on talking to a lot of sellers, you know, there's still there's still a lot of logistical problems right now on supply chain. So, uh, to be honest, I don't know how long it's going to last for. Um, you know, there's based on some of the articles I read recently, you know, there is a shortage in you know a lot of goods out there right now. So people are trying to buy things that they can't get, right? And it's you know either being stuck on port or you know. So that could change. I mean, um, you know, that inherently would make prices go higher, right? Supply and demand. If there's not enough supply, then, you know, the demand goes up and people have to raise their prices uh, and vice versa. So, um, yeah, we'll see what happens the rest of the year. But at least the good news is that, um, you know, a lot of the inventory problems that Amazon's been um, putting in terms of uh, restrictions and stuff, uh, I think based on most of the sellers I've been in contact with, it seems like that kind of, that part has uh, alleviated a little bit and it's getting better. So people are being able to send more products to inside into Amazon. But I think the challenge right now is being able to get those products uh, to come in from China or, you know, other uh, countries right now is, um, it's taking longer and longer. Yeah, I think to to kind of echo that that there does seem to be a little bit of of COVID, like like you Henson, it's kind of we've been tracking this a little bit. There does seem to be a little COVID influence with a lot of California uh, labor unions uh, demanding more of a kind of a safer work workspace, right? So um, they have less people on the on on the on the yards on the dockyards, which can cause congestion. Factor that in with the high demand that's been yielded over 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 the last year. Uh, with the products that are coming in from China, it's just kind of like, it's been kind of almost like if anybody's familiar with the East Coast, like Interstate 95 being a gridlock, you know, for like several, then it's the one that goes all the way from Maine to Florida. Um, but I did see a, a couple of useful tips of information, a couple of sellers that we know kind of switched over their uh, port of uh, their, their actual ports that comes in from LA, instead of LA, where there's a two to three month, I think some of them are waiting two to three months uh, shift that down to 10 to 14 days lead time. So um, just a thought, uh, I'm not recommending one way or the other. I just wanted to provide everybody with some, some information that we're seeing uh, across forms and articles. So uh, keep up with the Port of Los Angeles congestion reports. Just Google that, that in. There's some really good information out there uh, to, to help you out. Um, all right, we, we're, we're running over, but we, we do have a couple more questions. So if anybody has any more questions, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna answer them here. Uh, as best as we can and go from there. So this one comes from Michael. Uh, can you, uh, so he's asking about the, the our data, our feedback with data. Can you guys go a little bit more into the year over year increases on feedback ways with, in, when it comes to unique SKUs? Uh, now, I think, what he, I think what he's asking here is uh, 
uh, what type of Unix user that, that he's asking, whether it be product category or not, but can you, we have an answer for that and I, I can take care of that in a second, but for Unix SKUs, um, can you kind of delve in there, uh, Henson, and, and for a little bit more clarity, like what exactly we, we mean by that? Um, yeah, this unique SKUs are just sellers adding um, new SKUs to their products. So mm -hmm. for example, if they're adding, it could be a variation, it could be a new ASIN, right? So within um, an ASIN, you can create more variations, right? So we're seeing sellers creating either more variations or adding more products just in general. So that, that, um, that number is based on a uh, combination of both. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's a great question. I mean, we could definitely break it down even more. Um, so maybe in our next webinar, that'd be a great feedback. We could try to break the SKU data down maybe even into categories for you guys. Yeah, I think uh, I think that's definitely something. And um, if anybody has any more questions, we're we're gonna uh, what's the end of the questions? If you have anyone, please put it in the chat. Um, that being said, if you have some time, please let us know in the survey. That's something you'd like to see. Like we were asking in the survey, where where we can improve on, what type of content you want. Please put that in there. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, one more side note too. I think what's really great about the unique SKUs, uh, uh, you know, the ASIN versus category, um, is that uh, with you as your business, you 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 place those categories the way you want to. Right. So it's like it's, it's not necessarily something that's, you know, optimally, optimally, like people want to kind of keep track with what the product categories are uh, across the board. But for some reason, if there's a if there's a business or, or, or a retail that wants to sell their way, you can kind of uh, maybe not necessarily make it as custom as you want, but more customizable for what it is that you do for your business uh, in terms of, uh, of the SKUs. But certainly, I think uh, going deeper into ASINs and parent categories and parent Parent, sorry, parent uh, ASINs and, and categories would, would be a great, great idea. Uh, what do you think about that, Henson? Maybe we, we come back up here in a month or two and fire through those numbers? Yeah, definitely. We'll try to break things down a little bit more granular so we can you know, dive a little deeper. But, um, but yeah, yeah, we'll get there. All right, everyone. We are over time, but we are definitely, definitely happy you joined us. Thank you all so much for being a part of our webinar today. Uh, please, please, please uh, like us, subscribe, all that number on, on Facebook, on social, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Feedback Wiz, uh, Facebook as well, YouTube at Feedback Wiz as well. Uh, stay up to date, subscribe to those videos. We have information coming out on the reg every two or three days. Subscribe to the Ecom Wiz podcast as well for all types of tips and, and unique tricks and selling tips and news that are going directly to uh, from different sellers like you with some different tips and tricks that you can do to sell even more and dominate 2021. Henson, my man, thank you so much for, for being with us today, diving into the numbers. Everyone, thank you. Be on the lookout for those resources coming up into your inbox shortly. Have a great day. Hit us up if you have any questions. Thank you, everybody. All right, take care. All right. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and for more information, please visit feedbackwiz.com.